Have you seen the film Godzilla vs. the Tetley Bittermen? <laughs> it's not on your televisions this year, but I've managed to, uh, I've learnt the soundtrack off by art. Screeching eight, the scraper breaking hyper dragon descends on Bradford looking for a scrap. He slaps the nut on a black, block of flats. Take that, he snorts, and Bradford trembles. Doors are locked and trousers shat, except in one pub, the Charles Bronson Arms, where swarms of sweat-sodden Tetley bitter men are too pissed to hear the heavy footsteps crunching the cobblestones, like a child munching Seabrook crisps. A scaly head lisps, Come and fight, you so-called Yorkshiremen. The Tetley bitter men reply as one, Piss off, Burke. Oscar, Wy Oscar Wilde's got notes on these lads. Godzilla's lost for words. Think you're hard, you bloody dragon. Ponce in here with your restaurants and air cutting your garlic smelling breath. Well, we'll tell you this. We might be pissed. And you might be a scaly, scaled up, fire breathing real man eater. But any one of these here lads could beat you into bloody lard. One hand tied behind his back and he's in inside of Morrison's carrier bag. Godzilla stopped and thought. A bitter man moves nearer. Godzilla runs out the door, the bitter man hits the floor unconscious, not from fear, you mind, but a packet of crisps and 24 pints. <laughs> All of which just goes to prove you don't mess with Tetley Bitterman, because a Tetley Bitterman never loses. <laughs> it's a true story, this. It's about when I got stopped and searched by the drug squad at Leicester Forest East, stitching down here a bit back. And uh, they did find some drugs on me. So you find a member of the uh, drug squad trying to palm you off with vitamin pills, you know where they came from. <laughs> Drizzling rain and heavy fog and being swamped by the drug squad, a police dog sniffs out vitamin pills. Speed kills, these build your muscles. What's these, punk? Do you take drugs, the constable snarls. The dog looks puzzled. I'm quite fond of puppy dogs, it's pigs that should be muzzled. This one's about teddy boys in Bradford, our youngest and freshest youth cult. Dark satanic teddy boys, scrape reflective brill cream and a Cadillac's fender chrome. Home is where the heart is, not Altamont or Memphis. These cats are Bradford's coolest and the fattest and the oldest. Rock and roll molders in their time warp drainpipe mines. Bill Haley never puked on stage. Cochrane never swaggered like sex on crutches. No outraged parent ever said no son of mine shall ever be a teddy boy. They forget the point of outrage. They forget that once what they said and did shocked and horrified vicars and editors. Remembering the Roxy, they dragged drapes over heaving chests. Woodbine wrecked, they creak with pride, a zest for death, no love of life. Seen in tunnel vision, here in black and white and grey in 78 RPM and Elvis Presley Requiem. Rebels with receding hairlines, beer guts and failing eyesight. A thug with a mortgage, a rebel with wife and kids. Not so much without a cause, as a lingering, festering menopause. There are no Cadillacs in Bradford, just old men going grey. And a brand new crop of shocking punks will end up just the same. This is about the, the only newspaper in Britain, the only newspaper, and that includes Socialist Worker, which still upholds those fine values and traditions for which Fleet Street was once renowned. I talk, of course, of The Sun. <laughs> and a series of articles they ran last year called Agro Britain, A Guide to the Cults, telling you what to wear if you were a punk rocker, where to go if you were a rude boy, and who to kill if you were a skidhead. The Fleet Street shit chic neat little label makers enabled Joe and Mabel Smith to spot what goes in the shadowy subterranean world of subculture cult heroes and the mindless sheep who kiss the feet of the cocaine-consuming tinsel Neros. Agro Britain's apathetic youth, a spineless, pathetic, foppish group of gays and communists, anti-war feminists, long-haired, punk-rocking, drug-taking anarchists, papists and godless drug pagans, half-brick lobbying, commie-plotting social misfits and misfit socialists, interracial couples couple in public parks, the sharks and the jets get propositioned by lisping effect randy dandies and trashed by killer skinheads who swarm in every inner city brick strewn street amphetamine roller skates strapped to oversized feet the scourge of a nation that's gone to the dogs on its knees dr bob martin's cure for the flea-ridden bulldog is the short sharp shock of two minutes in the dock and two years of sweating in a pox-ridden prison for all who exalt the revolting craven disheveled unshaven folk devils who corrupt and disturb the minds of the young. The Sun's so-called journalists, 
quack sociologists and fascist hacks. I grow Britain in 13 paragraphs. Broken noses get easy laughs from there. Tick greedy, bum hungry, high intellectual audience of mindless Thatcher voting zombies. The Fleet Street shit shit excretes cheap lies and the sun cries, Agro Britain! Exclamation mark. The only agro done is done by the sun to the minds of the kind of scummy twat who believe the pat that the Fleet Street shit sheep feeds them. <laughs> this one's about a bloke in, in Leeds called Ha Ha Ha. The greaseball spit boy slob who got me the ten minute slot of so-called poetry reading in a third-rate rot-ridden half-empty hand-pumped weak beer bordello sidles up and dribbles in my ear. I thought you said you weren't political, you shit. Oh dear, I'm afraid we can't use you again. The views you express go against the wormy beer vomit bigot soaked grain of this fine establishment. You might hurt the feelings of someone we need, local Tory dignitaries, or a member of the National Association of Right-Wing Dog Molesting, Child-Killing, Wife-Bashing, Fascist, Rich, Big Thug Club. <laughs> and we couldn't have that now, could we? Ha ha ha! I really like some of the poems, though, especially when you said, tit. Ha ha ha! Bum was another one. I laughed till I came with excitement, I did, but drop all the politics. All that boring commie shit. A decent pint and a bag of crisps. All the decent folk in a decent pub want to smell or taste. So shut your face and tell us some funny ones. Some belly laughing ho ho burning fat gut mannerisms, sonny. Do you mention sex and are we myself silly, pissed up and grinning clientele? Jokes about the Jews always get a laugh or two. Alstovich is always a real bloody screamer. Party apps with razor sharp trickle red streamers, top rosy cheek cackling idiot grin vacuum heads, the clotted gin and coke set, the National Socialist Office Workers Party night out want entertainment from their bought and paid for pet poodle prostitute poet. He makes them laugh. Ha ha ha. An instant cure for mindless fun is to drown the gibbering mindless scum in deep run baths of their own warm blood. That's my idea of fun. <laughs> Right. Right. This is called a bang and a wimp. It's about being threatened in hamburger bars. Swing door swings open in the fast food fun palace. Two pairs of eyes meet mine. I steal myself and grimace. Elbows against the counter, they slump. Mean-eyed, po-faced, no nonsense. Prepubescent pugilists, terror tots. South London's finest, knee-high nihilist planning nursery crimes. The wimpy bar mafia, nine years old, macko, murderous. Primary school, but primed to kill, or maim, or terrorise. Size you up and slice you through with Peter Sutcliffe eyes. They're into older women. Eleven or twelve's their favourite age. They chat them up as they come in, invade their space like space invaders. Oi, love, want some chips? Then invite them home for glue and a private rendition of the new exploited single. Or some other manic mayhem to make their extremities tingle. Soon they'll be old enough to bunk into a disco, but till then they'll stick to the hamburger hustle. A bang and a wimpy, a wimpy and a bang. The grim and grimy gangsters from the mustard and crass gang. Video vandals. Violent virgin vigilantes virgin on the vindictive. No, I've been searching for the young soul rebels, been searching everywhere, couldn't find them anywhere. But here they are in the wimpy barn, right by Victoria Station. I stand and watch them operate in muted fascination till... Here, got 10p, mate. Snaps me back to hard reality, and the half-concealed glinting switchblade smiles with awful clarity. I give them 21 pence and they give me a hard smile. Now they've the price of another tube, they're happy for a while. And in the wimpy wonderland, the crisis kids run free. A bang, a wimpy and a sniff, and home in time for tea. <laughs> this is about modern music, so-called. It's called pat music for wreck people. In the chaotic, cracked-up cacophony of the candy floss crass kiddie culture, I stand, cynical and surreptitiously censorious, seeking sincerity. Futurist fads and fascist fetishes fester in the flash fashion fold-outs, and disco-derived dribble dribbles from the deranged and damaged minds of the dance hall deacons. Tr Transistor-transmitted teenage thrombosis for terminally traumatised teeny tots. Haircut 100, Adam and the Ants, pictures of sting while you're wetting your pants. Show me a hero and I'll give him a zero. This ain't rock and roll, this is pesticide. <laughs> Everybody salsa, big deal, sure. Get your corpse out on the floor. Dance away. I'll leave you there. I'll stand for no illusions. I have my integrity. I'll draw my own conclusions. 
One day all your icons will go blindfold to the wall and a disco dirge will drown their screams and catch them as they fall. This is called Andy is a Corporatist. It's not about Andy Dalgleish. <laughs> Andy is the Corporatist. He is corpulent, often pissed, and he is friends with Flemish Nazis. Goes to Hitler's birthday parties seven times a year. I met him in the bridge house. He was there on business, but he couldn't start a riot, so he stayed kind of quiet, and the business didn't play, so Andy went away. I met him in Birmingham the day the shit really hit the fan. The fan was me and the shit was Andy. Dex's concert, really Andy. Broken noses, really dandy. Andy thinks it's such a laugh to sing horse vessel in the bath, smash up other people's fun like they tell him in the sun. But I knew his time would come. Andy's mate came up today, told me he'd been put away. Stupid nutter anyway, that's all he said, then turned away. This one's called, I don't talk to pop stars. <laughs> I don't talk to pop stars and they don't talk to me. It's a mutual arrangement, the way we like to be. I don't talk to pop stars, they make me feel depressed. And I won't sit in dressing rooms and watch them get undressed. I don't talk to pop stars, they really piss me off. I hope they die in poverty like poor Vincent van Gogh. I don't talk to pop stars and I hope that you don't too, because if you've talked to Madame Ant, then I won't talk to you. I don't talk to pop stars, won't share their cans of beer. I never nick their underpants, I better make that clear. I don't talk to pop stars, I think they should be shot, or gassed, or hung, or sterilised, or the old bloody lot. I don't talk to pop stars, they make me feel quite sick. Especially that seething Wells, he really is a prick. I don't talk to pop stars, they really make me vomit. I'd rather clean out lavatories or study Ailey's Comet. I don't talk to pop stars, but say this hopefully, one day, if I'm a pop star, will you still talk to me? <laughs> right, a few more poems. First one's about Harlow, called Foyer Bar. Living in a brave new town, things can often get you down. Not much to say, not much to do. Existence gets on top of you. Some folks say, well, why not go and meet a girl in a disco? But I don't want to walk that far, so I go to the Foyer Bar. We go there and we sit together, uniform is jeans and leather, and we sit and drink and pose, and we sit and drink and doze. Everything we say is cool, big fish in a little pool, yeah. If you want to be a star, you'll make it in the foyer bar. <laughs> Two more, right? It's about the Russian threat. It's called They Must Be Russians. They slither around corners with scarves around their faces. They always turn up in improbable places. They lack the good taste of the British, our graces. They're horrid. They must be the Russians. They're always involved in some dastardly plot. They're never content with whatever they've got. And they are the cause of the great British rot. They're horrid. They must be the Russians. They sit in the Hilton and scowl at the waiters. They drink a foul potion distilled from potatoes. And everyone knows they detest us and hate us. They're horrid. They must be the Russians. They bend in the trots who will want to enslave us. And countless red spies will want to deprave us. But Maggie's all right. She'll defend us and save us from our muggers from Moscow. The Russians. And her mate in the White House. A fine manly figure. He knows how to handle a Jew or a nigger. When Maggie gets Trident and Ron gets the trigger, we'll give them deterrent, those Russians. Oh, hang on a minute. My brain's on the blink. I think that the Kremlin's been spiking my drink. How unpatriotic. I've started to think. It must all be down to the Russians. My mate just tells me they've got a new plan. They're holding a party in Afghanistan, and he's been invited as number one fan. They can't all be horrid, the Russians. Hey, look, over there, they're down in the park. They're holding a meeting out there in the dark. The speaker looks just like a stock exchange clerk. They all dress so formal, the Russians. I'm going to meet them. I want to be friends. Find out if they follow the West's latest trends and have long discussions, the means and the ends. I'm getting quite fond of the Russians. Hang on. They're smiling and there's music playing. It's New Wave. The Malchicks. Oh, I feel like staying. <laughs> They're handing out ice cream and bopping and swaying. I think I'll go back with the Russians. And second one is about the thing that the bloody British newspapers ain't more than the Russians. The social security scroungers. This is called Russians in the DHSS. <laughs> it first was a rumour dismissed as a lie, but then came the evidence none could deny. A double page spread in the Sunday Express. The Russians are running the DHSS. 
The scroungers and misfits have done it at last. The die of destruction is finally cast. The glue-sniffing Trotskyists finally excess. The Russians are running the DHSS. Must be the truth, because it's there in the news. A plot by the Kremlin, financed by the Jews, and set up by Scargill, has met with success. The Russians are running the DHSS. So go down to your job centre. I bet you'll see Iranian students get handouts for free. <laughs> And drug-crazed punk rockers cavort and caress in the interview booths in the DHSS. <laughs> they go to Mallorca on taxpayers' money. Are you there? Stop laughing. I don't think it's funny. And scroungers and tramps eat smoked salmon and cress. Now the Russians are running the DHSS. <laughs> we'll catch that rat scargoo with our red rat catcher. We'll send him to dinner with Margaret Thatcher. And we'll make him stay there until he'll confess that he put the reds in the DHSS. Then we'll hang them and flog them and hang them again, and hang them and flog them and more of the same. We'll gas all the dull cues and clear up the mess. Get rid of the reds and the DHSS. Cheers, good night.